It all started with a phone call to my dad. Hello? Hey, I bought a microwave on Craigslist and they live in your neighborhood. Could you pick it up for me? Sure. Why do you need a microwave? In our last newsletter net worth update, I mentioned that I spent about $200 on used laptop batteries for an upcoming project. That project is fixing up an electric bike that was given to me. Unfortunately, mine doesn't quite look like the picture. The brakes were rusted, a pedal was missing, the wheels were bent, and the battery pack was missing. If I could get the bike back into rideable shape, a new battery would cost about $120, but the range would only be 10 to 15 miles. That's when I decided to convert my e-bike to run on a lithium-ion battery pack made from used laptop batteries. If my math is right, for about the same price, I'll have a battery that weighs three times less and take me three times farther. I started by ordering 13 HP laptop batteries off of eBay for $10 each. I took them all apart and calculated their capacity. I'll be going in-depth on this process in a separate video. From the factory, batteries like these are spot welded together, not soldered. So I decided to make my own spot welder for the project. That's when I discovered the whole world of microwave oven transformers. It turns out, inside every microwave is a little device that in the right hands can be turned into not just a spout welder, but a stick welder, a car battery charger, a stereo amplifier, a plasma cutter, or even a super-powered electromagnet. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> this is how you get one for yourself. Step one is finding a microwave. The bigger the better. If it's broken, that's fine. The transformer is probably still good and you can get it for free. Start by removing the shell, exposing all of the electronics inside. Be extra careful and wear gloves because there's a capacitor inside that looks like this, which stores electricity even if it's not plugged in. This is what you're looking for right here. Look at the size of that thing. At this point, I'm getting really excited. You have two coils. You have your primary coil and your secondary coil, and the number of windings determines how many volts it outputs. So it's very high voltage out, but low current. And we want the opposite of that for a spot welder. So we're gonna keep our primary in place and replace the secondary with really thick gauge wire that will be very low voltage, but very high current. This is severely oversimplified, but that's about the gist of how it works. For an electromagnet, just remove the secondary coil entirely. As soon as I let off the power. To remove the coil, you can either chisel it out carefully or cut through the welds of the iron core. I chose the second option. Most people really struggle with this, but I got really lucky and mine just popped right off. Wow, that was easy. Next week, I'm gonna build a proper battery tab spot welder, but I just wanted to see if it would work. So I cut a few sticks of wood and attached the ends of my coil wire to some homemade copper electrodes. It's amazing to me that such a simple device can be so abundant, so versatile, and so useful. It went from an electromagnet to a spot welder in five minutes with four feet of wire and a couple of zip ties. Well, they are definitely fused. Mm. That's pretty good right there. So dad, the reason I need a microwave is for the transformer, so I can make a spot welder, so I can assemble a battery pack for the electric bike I'm fixing up.